All right, yo, welcome back. It's your boys at the Combat Chat Podcast. Shane. Trent. I'm Trent. Hugh. Hey. That's you. Just trying out these new mics. <laughs> <laughs> well, i got two new mics. You can see them. They're very nice, aren't they? The Rode. Got lots of great reviews. It looks good as well. If you're on the YouTube version from there, it looks pretty good. I'll go with the old mic here. <laughs> Just going old school. Shane's been selfless. <laughs> yeah. Taking one for the team. Thank well, you, that's, Shane. That's all right. Um, but yeah, you're getting all the new stuff going through. Cause, you know, because we're coming up the three years, fellas. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. The ravages of time. How yeah. old is that, man? My face. <laughs> <laughs> In dog years. <laughs> Podcast years. Very old. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, it's like, I don't know. What, what's the average span of a podcast? Because you never hear about the ones that kind of teeter away, do you? No. It's probably less than three years. Mm. I'm so this is an above average duration for yes. a podcast. We're, we're just, stayers. We're stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's just go into like today. We're going to be doing a little bit of recap of um, one that just happened last night. And then we're going to go into like the realm of bizarre fights that would have happened or could have happened, but never kind of really fell through. But there was a lot of hype going on film. Yeah. And we might even break down some of those matches, how they, how they would have went down. <laughs> All right, so let's go into uh, one tournament. Uh, no, no, sorry. Uh, one championship that was on last night. Uh, a lot of Muay Thai, kickboxing. A few MA fights that went really quick, but let's go into the Muay Thai and kickboxing side of things. So, Hugh. Yes. Uh, good card. Um, let's talk about them in the order that they happen, I suppose. First was... Oh, I should get um, the opponent's name, so I'm not... Super girl. <laughs> It's, it's funny, it's like there's, there's always an A-side. We remember the A-side. Yeah, um, but Supergirl looked unreal. Mm. Um, pretty good. See, this is a funny one, um, this Supergirl fight, because this is another, like, let me just get the uh, all my details here in front of me. The, I've We talked the other week about sort of like funny a, a, a funny stoppage. Mm. Um, it was the broken note. It was in the Wonder Girl fight. Yeah, sisters. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't guessed, uh, Wonder Girl and Supergirl sisters. Yeah. What? Sick names. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Oh. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Did they fight each other? <laughs> no, no, they didn't fight each other. Well, that would be cool. But they train in two different camps, don't they? Uh, yeah, because the Supergirl is still at the family camp at, at Jaren's Ark, but Wonder Girl's moved over to Fairtex. But I think. Um, I think Wonder Girl's making a move to MMA mm. uh, eventually, so and maybe Supergirl will go over to Fair Sex Well, because Supergirl's a bit younger. I think Supergirl's only um, sixteen or seventeen years yeah. old. Yeah, she's a savage. She came to Australia and fought on Rogue um, uh, against Erin Harberger yeah. in a really good fight last year in the before time. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> before times. Yeah. This was an interestingly quick fight. Like I think Supergirl is. Um, not like, like she's got a signature move. Is mm. that walk up knee? Yep. And like you, like you would have seen this if you've not heard of Supergirl. You would have, and you're sort of like a a Muay Thai fan. You would have seen this. Really, a combat sports fan in general, because it's kind of like viral. These videos of Supergirl just kneeing the absolute piss out of her dad on the pads. Yes, yeah, uh, I can't look at it and go. With my frame, I go, there's no way I can do that. My short little stubby legs can't just arc up so high and then absolutely spear yeah. into it. Like, yeah, because I watch um, Supergirl throwing knees because so, I always try it mm. on the pads and the bag and stuff mm. because I love it. Yeah. Like, it's so dope. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, it makes no sense to me. Like, it's, it's one of the... I see techniques like when I watch Super Leg mm. kick. I'm like, that's a dope right kick. Like, I can't right kick like that. But but I can understand it. Like I feel like I just need to work on it a lot. Like yeah. when I watch Supergirl throw those step up, she throws them from both sides as well. Mm. I'm like, they don't make any sense. Like they don't make any like <laughs> like when I try that. Like it, it's the way. It's a couple of things. It's the way she can. It's the. It's got this real pick straight upright and then arc in diagonal like mm. split like that it almost like it gets like slingshot in yeah <laughs> and then it's just the way, yeah that's, that, that's a good way to put it is a slingshot because it's like as she picks it up yeah mm. tightens right up and then just stabs with just this violent intensity mm -hmm. um it also seems to be like you'd swear from watching videos for a train that like it's the only thing she does it's just like hey <laughs> because <laughs> you, you watch these videos of her just uh, like I guess like that's how they kind of like mm. finish their pad rounds or whatever it's just she just hey Hey, hey, but like, it's, it's just so 
out of what you would see anywhere, really. He's like, yeah, yeah. I've, I've like, you know, been in Converse first for a long time. I've never seen these ever done like that. Yeah. But in that way as well. So it's like bizarre. But like you see in practice, you go, that would really fucking hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like no one else really needs like that. Like no mm. one. Uh, that I, I mean, like it's a kind of neat, you need a certain frame to do. And I'm like, look, it's, it's an interesting, like, I wonder, because I think like her kind of only trainer has been um, her dad. Mm. And it's just like, did you just look at kind of her frame and be like, this is how you need, but this is how you are going to need. Like, yes. it's just like so unique. Like I would practice it all the time. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't make it work. <laughs> I love, I'd love to be able to need like that. Like mm. I always try, but I, I can't. And it's just, it's also just the way it like splits through defenses as well. Like mm. it's quite, like at that distance, it's quite difficult need to defend just because I think it's just the, the the hip dexterity required to just throw it from that bizarrely precise angle and fire it down the middle. But mm. it's beautiful. It really is a thing of beauty. It's one of the most kind of unique signature moves in stand-up combat sports. But like that was kind of just how this... She's got, she's got a, a whole style built around throwing this knee. Like it's just mm. this very... It's just got such an awkward footwork of just kind of... Just kind of shuffling into position to throw the knee. And then this is sort of just what happens. She just she just kind of wades into a point where if you're going to throw something, it's going to engage kind of like a, a mid-range clinch. Mm. And then just kind of you're going to throw anything and then that's just the opening. Because that's what happened here. It's like, how long was this fight? A minute and a half, something like that? Yeah. It, was it wasn't long. Half a round or less than half a round. There's nothing in it. Yeah, just kind of... She only really threw the, the, that knee once off her right side, just picked up, dropped it. But you could see and hear it. It's interesting to, to see these knees getting thrown with no crowd. Mm. Because you can hear it, like, and the way that um her opponent backed right up off of that knee, it was like, yeah, gross. <laughs> but then it wasn't the knees doing the damage though. She started uh-huh. just her you know, right hands are, uh, uh, yeah, just like it, just like yeah, well. yeah, uh, the knee and the and the and the right hand, just like you know, I guess it's that longer style. Because like Wonder Girl and Supergirl for the divisions, they're fucking huge. Big, yeah, long girls. I think like Supergirl, in a different way to her sister, like. Like Wonder Girl's quite solid. I think probably doing a little bit more of like a Western strength and conditioning type jam over at Fairtex. Mm. Whereas like Supergirl, I would imagine is still training very classically tight, just whacking the pads. And but she's just long. Like she's not yeah. as kind of like um, she's not as filled out, I suppose, as mm. as Wonder Girl is. But still, just like stupid long and and rangy. Um, but yeah, it's just that right. And she's kind of like. She's got that style as well. She, she throws the right hand a lot like she throws the knee. Mm. It's just like, she throws it once, she throws it twice. <laughs> but these right hands, because like, she dropped her twice with the same shot, just that, pow, pow. her whole boxing game is just like a long one too. Like mm. I noticed this when she fought Aaron Hartberger on Rogue as well, is that her boxing style is so not boxing. It's so like... Mm incorrect like <laughs> she sticks her chin right up in the air mm. just that's what happened on this one like they just dueled with like her chin was right up yeah she both. got her head flipped back a few times yeah. as well and where she threw that fight ending right hand from was like <laughs> but then because she's rangy like I, I guess that's what you get used to fighting people that are typically shorter than you yeah. um yeah is it you can kind of just stick your chin up in the air because yours will land first mm. but this was an awkward one because she Threw the one two down the pipe and, and dropped her opponent clean. It wasn't like heaps on it. Like it, it was a bit of a flash knockdown. I thought the first one, like she got hit solid. But. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think the first one were like you know warranted a count really. Mm. And then just really as soon as they reengaged off of the count, threw the exact same. Mm. Just that one two down the pipe because it's like always it's kind of an ugly one two, but it's an effective one two. Like and it, and it, it works well. Like it goes down the pipe. She times yeah. it quite well. Um, but yeah, second one dropped her a little bit more solid, but there seemed to be, this was a really weird stoppage. Like there seemed to be no count. Like he, mm. like, like, cause even though she got rocked harder off of this one too, um, she was still getting right back up and then the ref seemed to not wave it or initiate a count and then the bell rang. Mm. And like, I didn't really understand this. I, I've talked to people like someone messaged me before. It was like, oh, do you think her corner waved it? And I was like, maybe, but I didn't see it. I feel like one sometimes doesn't do a great job of showing you like the whole landscape of what's going on in a stoppage. Because yeah. like this to me was a, like, like she got hit for sure. But I feel like you usually see a count like that 
Well, you usually see a count. Like mm. it, the, yeah. the, the idea that he didn't count at all mm. um, when she was climbing to her feet is kind of strange. Like it's not like she like you only don't see a count if someone like goes flat and mm. like clearly they're not getting back up or shouldn't get back up. Yeah, like she was still kind of with it. Like you know, the, obviously had been knocked down a second time, but the first one was mm. too bad. Yeah, it, it just seems strange. Yeah, and it's like yeah. um. Same thing with, with the sisters' fights, you know, uh, Wonder Girl. It seems like the stoppages seem pretty quick, yeah. like off the mark. I don't know, maybe if it's one of those ones where they're, they're building the girls and they just kind of know these girls are just not on the same level. Mm. They just go, like, well, if it gets too hairy, make sure no one gets absolutely flat knocked out if you, if you can avoid it. Yeah. I, I'd like to think there's nothing, like, kind of sinister on it. Like, you know. I was just thinking that. Yeah. I was thinking, mm, are they fighting cans? They're not, they're not fighting cans. Like, um, Wonder Girl for. Uh, Brooke Farrell mm. um, and Supergirl like the Lopez that she fought um, is quite good like I've seen her on like that kind of mm. Bangkok scene uh, at present maybe they're not fighting the matches you'd like to make for them because obviously they can only pull from talent in talent but they're not fighting cans like they're mm. fighting experienced girls just the level's a little bit different mm. but um, they seem strange like a lamb to slaughter kind of thing Yeah, when you just like all right, we've seen enough and kind of ringing the bell. <laughs> it's also, it's, it's whether or not it's anything like it, it's just lack of explanation. Like, mm. like they never kind of like, this is why that fight was stopped. Like the broken nose one was the same. Like, let's just have a bit of insight. Because mm. like, that, yeah, both seemed a little bit early. But yeah, good performance by Supergirl. So like those two sisters, the Jaren Suck sisters, like ridiculous power. Like, and I, yeah. I think Supergirl's kind of like growing. She always had those wicked knees, but... I think he's really growing into her, like, fight-ending power. Because mm. that right hand was landing just sweet. Like, that was unreal power. Yeah, and there's something, like, about, like, the, those, like longer people, when they kind of get that sweet on right on the end, like, the, the power that kind of generates from the leverages. Yeah. You know, it seems that it's just a different kind of hit. It's like, you see this a lot in combat sports, I think, like, the long rangey fighter is never one you expect to have, like, one-shot kill power. But a lot of the time, that's the way it goes, yeah, because, mm. like, the... Ability of those long limbs, yeah, to generate. Mm-hmm. It's like a trenchable. It's like yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just fire from a long distance, absolutely gnawing anything at the end of it. Yeah, it was interesting. I saw um, um, uh, Scott Scott from Modern Warrior mm. this morning. I think it was him posted the idea that they should do um the Thai sisters versus the Australian oh, sisters, and they okay. should do Alma. It would be Alma versus Supergirl, and mm. and. and uh, Amanda versus Wonder Girl. Okay. <laughs> why not? <laughs> Maybe. Might as well. That's a cool Let's idea. We'll sell a few. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, watch that. <laughs> yeah, just do sisters versus sisters. Well, that's it. Are they in two different divisions altogether? Like, both sisters? Yeah. Like, the the, mm. the, the weights would make sense. Mm. But, like, they're, they're in yeah. the weights of... Mm. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a fun idea. It is. And it's like, uh, as well, especially with the sisters, because you know they're just good. Yeah. Like, overall, it's like it's... And you can only work with what you got, what's happening at the moment with no borders being opened mm. up. But one, like they said, soon, they're going to be starting going international yeah. again, which is good to see. And, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just want to see like, yeah, just that, yeah, I want to see where they're at. I want to see that step up in, mm. in a competition. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. I'll be interested to see like, um, which countries are able to, to enter lot like, cause the plans, they go to Shanghai next. Um, and then Vietnam after that, I mm. think we took Vietnam. No, no, no. Um, Singapore. 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 Yeah. Um, after that. And there is talks, I believe, of like a, a, an Asian travel bubble. Because like a lot of these, a lot of those countries like are actually doing really well. Mm. And their numbers are real low and they're going to open travel. But I don't know what that would mean for like if any of our Aussies can get in and fight. Mm. What about you, crowds? Would they have an audience there? I think it would be crowdless. Crowdless. Yeah. Stuff. But they, they'd be able to like have a hotel ready, fly fighters into the hotel, quarantine them for a couple of weeks and sort of just let them train in like a yep. quarantine hotel um, and then put on events. Because like, I think that's there's talks about getting fighters over from mm. the UK and stuff like that. So I'd be interested to see that on... Well, if they're getting from the UK, it's just like you'd think like Australia. Just yeah. Like, why not? <laughs> it's why like you not? Say, but like it's also as well, like you go out there, like just go, look... If I'm coming out here and quarantine for this one, I'm staying out here for a good couple of months then. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I'm not coming back here. Like, do two weeks there and then two weeks here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, it would be interesting. Like, interesting to see mm. uh, if we can start to see properly international shows before the end of the year. But, yeah, good performance by 
super girl interested to see. Like, I don't really know who's still kind of... It, it, it's hard to have a feel for, like, who's around at the weights now. Yeah. Because, you know, people... It's all over the shop. Yeah. Like, um... Yeah. It's fucking brutal. Brutal stoppage. Mm-hmm. Bro, that was... It was more brutal than I thought it was going to be. I thought, like... Pro- I thought a super girl win, but I thought probably, like, a... You know, just, like, would do some damage with those knees and maybe win the decision. Like, oh, I didn't expect to see that kind of punching power as much yeah. as anything. Not really. But it sort of tells you how good... um. Aaron up in Queensland is. Because, mm. like, she took it to Supergirl yep. for five rounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like Supergirl won that fight. Yeah. Pretty handily, but Pretty it, was, handily. it was competitive for Yeah, for well, that's the main thing. Yeah. The competitiveness. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, so, um, moving up the card, we had uh, Super Lek. Mm-hmm. Super. There's actually a lot of Supers on this card. <laughs> like, I, because these weren't the only two either. There was, like, mm. one or two more. Mm. Um, one of the MMA fights had Super in it. Uh, yeah, okay. The, the guy who fought Brogan was ah, yeah, yeah. super something. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get some like Marvel names in there. It's too much DC. There is. I think there yeah. is. Come back to me on that. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm the stadium, there is. There's a Batman, but that's obviously uh, not a Marvel name. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably got Corona anyway. <laughs> he probably does. But he wears a mask to the ring. And... Oh, it is. Yeah. No, so this is me. This that's is me now. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was a strange fight. Um, Super Lek versus Fadi Khalid because I mm. didn't understand why it was kickboxing. Yeah, um, because Fadi fights Muay Thai. He fought Muay Thai in his, his last fight against um, okay. Huang Ding in the yeah. other mm. crowds. I, I, I didn't get it. Um, it was still good to watch, but I, I just didn't understand what the driver. If it's like, the, do they do you reckon they just want a kick, like that they want one of everything? Is that kind of do you think that would be the go? Maybe that's probably it's because I. Uh, well, I guess they're not, they're not getting like a plethora of like guys just wanting to do just kickboxing. Yeah, there. especially when they're sort of stuck in time. Like people don't go to Thailand. Like they've got Westerners there because mm. a lot of people sort of live there long term, but people don't move to Thailand to kickbox. Yeah. I wouldn't Typically. go there to watch a kickboxing match. <laughs> <laughs> What's this shit? <laughs> Where's the Muay Thai? Pro Nobo. That's like good though. It's just something weird. Like like a fight like Suplex versus Fadi. It's still a good fight, but it's a Muay Thai fight with less weapons. Like, it's... Because, like, like yeah. that's the jankest kickboxing you see is when it's, like, a real tie style fighting a real kickboxing style because they just get sort of tied up, you know? Like, you just mm. feel where, like, the rule sets differ and, like, neither guy can really... Or, like, the tie stars can't really do what they want to do. Mm. Whereas this fight was, like... Like, I like... That's probably, like, my favourite K1 to watch is, like, mm. two tyres fighting. Yeah. Because you get that kind of understanding that they're just fighting with that tyre style and mm. stopping when they come into the clinch. It's not like... It's not like a... Two sort of competing attempts at doing different games. It's just, mm. like, like Muay Thai adapted to kickboxing. So, we're going to see watch guys like Super Bond, Sita Chai fight mm-hmm. each other. Um those types of fights, like, to me, they're the most fun to watch. But probably to me, it's because I just like watching Muay Thai. Mm. So it's just <laughs> to that. Like, I don't have that much interest in kickboxing. Good fight, though. Um, mm. I thought this was another sort of one where, like, the commentary was sort of hyping Fadi's efforts a little bit too much. Like, mm. like Fadi did well in this fight. Like He, he landed some decent yeah. shots. I thought in that first round, he landed a pretty sweet um, left hook on Super Lek and mm. did actually kind of startle him for a second. But that was it. Yeah. Like, and I, I think kind of that moment... I understand this. This isn't even really a criticism. It's just kind of like an observation of when you're trying to commentate a fight, what happens. It's just like mm. that let kind of the story going like like that demonstration that he was in with the shot kind of meant he was given a look. Because from that moment on, he chased after Super Lake. Super Lake looks sweet. Like, I thought there was a lot of nice stuff. Like, with Super Lake, you kind of know what you're going to get mm. when he fights. Like he's He's got a couple of tools yeah. that... Got a nickname, the kicking machine. Yeah. <laughs> so I wonder what he's going to do. He's yeah. the best right kicker in the world, I reckon. Yeah. I think all the other sort of guys that are pointed to as the best kickers tend to be southpaws. They tend yeah. to be most of the mm. other big kickers. Like his uncle, uh, Sing Dam. Oh, yeah. Yep. Big left kicker. Yeah. Like, they actually have similar styles, just mm. mirrored for each other. <laughs> but it, oh, I guess he's a bit different, like, because Sing Dam has that kind of just like methodical kind of slow power kick whereas like super legs are real just whippy mm. kind of power kicker but that's kind of the size difference as well i guess but um yeah good fight i, I really like the super leg has quite an interesting right kick like i don't think it's conventional like the the angle on it is quite like, like if you go watch super leg fight 
I, I like the way he kind of, the way he sort of, you see it on the bag as well. I watch him train a fair bit and, and the way he kind of um, controls his right leg after he kicks is very interesting. It's got this funny angle and he arcs the kick over and then sort of it comes straight back down. Like mm. as a, it's difficult to describe, but watch the way, if you go watch Super Leg Fight, the way he kind of controls his kick back to the floor, like mm. to be ready to defend and ready to, to right kick again. He's also got... He threw it a few more times in this fight. He's got a sweet right hand. He doesn't use that much. Hmm. Like, he's just... Everything is just always loaded yeah. on that <laughs> was right that, that Kind of like that double attack side, isn't it? From yeah. the right hand to the right kick. And you watch them train at um, Kiat Mukau. Hmm. And that's sort of how they train them. Like, it's like, whichever side is your strong side, just throw that. Hmm. Heaps of the <laughs> right hand. Fair. They train, like, famously, brutally. Like, I've heard stories hmm. of people who went up there to train. Apparently, it's like... You do like five, eight minute rounds of pads. And, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, all right. Yeah, they, they work in just some stupid. And like, you know, never know how many rounds you're going to do. And yeah. just, but they, I, I, for everything I kind of heard about going, oh, it, like they're in um, Buram, so like not that many. Even though they're quite famous and have famous fighters, like not that many Westerners will go out there to train. Be too real. Yeah, be too real, yeah. Yeah. But you get like stories of going there. Apparently, they've just got just these ridiculous, like high, high, high volume style on the pads. Like always, but like it's complete freestyle. Like it's just on you to just throw, throw, Hi. throw. And like if you just kind of take too long to reset, that train will just throw you to the floor and you got to get up. But you can kind of <laughs> see that in their style that it's like right, right kick, right hand, right. Like something's just like kind of always day, coming. Day. Yeah, but always from the power side as well. So yeah. it's just like a. Yeah, just like high volume of just kill shots, but <laughs> but Superleg's footwork is so nice in this fight. Like I, I watch the way like he kind of lets um, DJ Khaled <laughs> chase him into a corner, and then just like he's really sweet, just kind of let his because he's he's got like a, a somewhat tense style, like a little bit more like kickboxing style. Like he really wants to burst in for combination, just let that rear hand come, kind of just cover the the left hook was landing well, and then. Let him low for the rear hand. And it's sweet, like, kind of duck under and pivot out. Yeah, To set good. that. Yeah, beautiful. And also just, like, it got him in trouble off the, the left hook. Like, um, Fadi picked it at one point, but, like, really just leaning his mm. torso in to bait. Um, mostly the hook. I think the hook was kind of like the the kill shot mm. from Fadi. But then just kind of swing back and land. But, yeah, some, some really nice footwork and kind of, like, movement from Super, like, in this fight. That's wor- worth going back to watch. Um, if you didn't see it, but yeah, pretty sweet performance. Again, like at the end of the fight, it, it's kind of like that kickboxing mentality of scoring, I guess. Like, mm. um, Fadi seemed pretty positive he'd won, but he didn't land much of substance. No, it was you know he ran, he smothered a fair bit of his work. Yeah, like in like you know, and like a lot of the stuff was just kind of just landing on gloves, like when he yeah. did multiple punch. Because thing that was like because <clears throat> Super Lek was just. Yeah, like, the invasion was good. And then a couple of times he got caught, but most of the other time he was just like, you know, catch and then throw the kick, move yeah. out. It just be pretty sweet to get rid of everything. Yeah, he, he had some moments. But for the most part, he controlled the ring, mm. backwards or forwards. Um, and, like, when Fadi landed, like, it was kind of just like a, a flush. Or like a, like a, you know, he landed okay, snuck around mm. the glove, but, but didn't really disrupt Um yeah. Superleg too much. When Superleg landed that right kick, like he almost snapped fighting in half. Yeah. Like like the the difference in who landed stronger is just like yeah. not even close. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. fight though. It was a good fight. It's one of those ones where I'm going, okay, I'm pretty sure Superleg won this, but I just don't know how they score kickboxing. That is the other thing, is that like, well, I don't get this in one in general, and I've probably said this before. Like when we do kick, like, like I don't think they, if you're truly having kickboxing in Muay Thai, they have distinctly different scoring systems. Mm. So when we're in one and you've got it all under the same umbrella, I'm kind of like, how is one scored differently to the others? I mean, I mean, like, if you've got a kickboxing fight, are you getting more points for moving forward? Which is kind of the way in mm. kickboxing, whether or not it's actually written down. Kickboxing, for the most part, aggression is a scoring factor, where in Muay Thai, it's not. Mm. And that's like not a criticism of either, of kickboxing as a style. You just have to understand that when you're fighting in different sports, they have different scoring criteria. So I want to know in one championship, like, should I mean it's probably too confusing. I would imagine they don't. I think they mm. probably just have the same yeah. kind of scoring system, and even it's probably like a hybrid because like mm. one Muay Thai scoring is not say stadium Muay Thai scoring exactly. Mm. It's got some differences. Um, I'd like to know yeah if the scoring is different because when I watch that, I'm like. Ugh. 
like, to me, when I watch that, I'm like, Fadi's not even in with a chance. But I'm like, does kickboxing have some bizarre opposite world scoring where I should be thinking this is close? Because <laughs> like, I don't get it. That's what I always say when people are like, that was a shoot decision. I'm like, I have no idea how to score kickboxing. Mm. And I don't think anyone does. Yeah, everyone's like, <laughs> there's just too many like um, sanctions where kickboxing is just a very open yeah. and rule. Like if you look at Glory and like how some of them talk from this, like, yeah, you got kicked in the arms. It doesn't score. Yeah. And I just go, mm, I don't know about that. It still fucking hurts. <laughs> With his arms down and he, gets, he got kicked on the arm. It doesn't score because he blocked it. His hand by his side. <laughs> yeah, this is like he's just look at him block. blocking the yeah, leg kicks with his arms. Yeah. With your arms. Yeah. <laughs> blocking it. Uh, the best uh, like analogy I heard for the kicks on the arms argument is like if a kick on the arms doesn't score, neither does a punch on the forehead. That, that's yeah. the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Just tuck your chin down and, and head by the punch. It's like they punching a score. helmet. You know? yeah. I saw that. I saw. I saw Brian Dennehy do that in a fighting movie once. I can't remember <laughs> what it was called. And and like the guy like throws a throws a punch. And every time he blocks, it, he just drops his head. And he like cracks his hand on top of his skull. Like yeah, that's a, his that's hand. the old, old school uh, Jack Dempsey trick. You yeah. put the head down, just get him the punch on top of your head, break yeah. the knuckles. Does it work? <laughs> if you have to wear the oh, punch, yeah. do it on top of the head. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty figurable style mm. if it's going to be your only line of defense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like, it's literally this part. Like, it is like literally punch a helmet. That's what it feels like. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not nice. The, 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 the pretty area, that's that's the one you want to punch. Yeah, you want to keep the, head. the money maker. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but good fight. Um, mm. Super Lake looks sweet. I, th- I think we need to do Super Lake and Rod Tang. Oh. Like, to me, this yeah. one just felt a little bit like, yeah, let's put Super Lake back. I feel like that's what, like, they've got a limited pool of fighters, mm. and they're just like, ah. Yeah. Chuck Super Lake back in there. Like, <laughs> like, like this just Thailand thing's been dope, actually, but, like, it'll get kind of old, mm. um, you know, if they had to do it for three more months. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, like, yeah. the pool's not that. No. Nah. It's big enough, but for a a show of one scale and they are you can see them recycling the fighters yeah across these couple of shows mm. well that's that's it isn't it because just the amount of fights they, they're pumping out yeah you're eventually going to go through a few times but yeah Super Lek and Rod Tang I mean that's the downside of us now leaving the Bangkok only thing because like mm. that's pushed them towards doing yep Thai versus Thai and like Super Lek versus Rod Tang would be mm. sick it would be so. It would be so sick. Like, and I don't know who I'd pick in that fight. Yeah, like, it's a definitely clash of opposite styles. Yeah, but at the same time, like I think Rod Tang looks kind of unbeatable in this one format. But I mm. think if you had to put together the style to beat him, probably Superlex a guy who's in with the shot. Like, mm. is he's not got that. Like, I think someone with that more laid back and and very points focused sort of stadium style that will fall apart with the little gloves mm. and just the kind of you know, that more kind of MMA-centric one mm-hmm. scoring system. But the little gloves more than anything. No, that's it. Um, with Rod Tang's style. But I think Superlex just got that high volume, high activity. He's sort of aggressive but defensively sound. He's like an aggressive counterfighter, mm. um, if that makes sense. Like, you know, yeah. he's, he's counterfighting on the front foot. Like, he's he's trying to control the ring forward, but at the same time, he's he just switches tempo as well. Like, he's still swaying back and still making you hit it air, but but pressuring you down at the same time. And someone like that, someone that's trying to push Rod Tang back, but not brawling with him, is like, like, it's a very interesting fight. Yeah. Uh, I would be fascinated to see that. <laughs> I'm always fascinated class. by counterfighters. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just because I never liked getting hit. Yeah. <laughs> so I just used to cover. Because <laughs> then it's like, like to them, to, to me in that fight, it's like, does Superlek walk Rod Tang? Like, you don't know. Mm. Do, does Superlek move forward on Rod Tang or to Super Lek. You know, because he kind of does both. He, he, he plays like a a backward game sometimes, but for, for the most, in spells, but for the yeah. most part, he's aggressive. I think he could go either way with Rod Tang. Just that, that kind of kicking style against Rod Tang, you could kind of try to mm-hmm. kick and move with him. It's, it's interesting. Um, we'd like to see. And he does have that bomb right hand. So, he, mm. you know, Rod Tang's kind of willing to eat one to give one in boxing exchanges. How would they meet up in the clinch? I think, you know... It would, that, that would probably be Super Lex game mm. um, in the clinch, but neither guy really likes that kind of mm. drawn out sort of extended clinch style. But but I think like that that would be a part of the game in those exchanges. Like if if Super Lex sort of wanted to play yeah. a knee centric game, like the, the separator. Yeah, that, 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 like it'd be really interesting. Um, mm. I'd like to see it. Uh, I don't know if they would do it. 
Why not? It's like, it's like you want to keep your boy out there, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm like, what else are you going to do with Rod Tang? <laughs> That's yeah. it. <laughs> Chuck him in shitty MMA fights. That's Yeah. <laughs> no, like, the last thing I want to see is Rod Tang to MMA. <laughs> <laughs> like you can have anyone but Rod Tank. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyone. <laughs> uh, good fight. Good to see Superleg. I've been enjoying just seeing Superleg active in the one format because he's one of my favourites in mm. in the stadiums and good couple of wins, especially to get that win over Pampayak last time. Pampayak, yeah, no disrespect, fun. buddy. Pampayak is a much more significant win. Mm. This one was just a little bit of like a whatever. <laughs> busy. What's that case? Yeah. What are you doing this weekend? Not much. I have you chuck on the gloves and you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Interesting, interesting future for for Superlek. And and I'm actually I've been quite impressed with Fadi Khalid in this because yeah. he had a good no. goal against Rod Tang when they fought. Mm. Um, and looked pretty strong in that mm. um, other fight against Huang Ding in the yeah. earlier fight. And it didn't look bad here either. Like I think there's, there's well, you know, it's like you know, Muay Thai fight, Fadi, Sock fight. That's a pretty good I fight. Make it happen. That's know? a pretty good fight. Yeah. I like to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's make that. Make Chachi, that we'll do that one. <laughs> do that one. There's, there's a freebie for you, mate. <laughs> I know Chachi listens in for my matchmaking too. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of them. Yeah. Just scribbling in the notebook. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that would bring us to the main event. This was a sick mm, fight. It was really. This good was fight. a sick fight. Yeah. I think like this was a good fight to show like when Pong Siri gets the right match. He's pretty dangerous. Oh, that's good when it's the right weight division. Right well. weight class, right <laughs> match. Yeah, like, like, I feel like this is a fight. Like, even to me, I was watching this, like, people were asking me what I think. I go, I pick Pong Siri. I don't know. <laughs> but it's one of those fights where you could literally, you know, stick him in a phone booth for you to remember phone booths. But then that just have, that's where the fight is. Because yeah. like, it was just the engagement. They were always just kind of grabbing each yeah. other, trying to go under over. Elbows. Oh, so elbows, elbows. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But look, and Pong's really, like, he's damaging strikes in this fight. There wasn't that a high variety. He threw the left hook really well. Mm. And he threw that cover hand right elbow. Like, I love a fight like this where it's a couple of tools just hammered him with just excellent timing. Mm. Like, that's what this was from Pong's He had some tricks. Like, I liked what Pong Sari was doing to keep this fight in the phone booth. Like you could see um, when Clancy, Sean Clancy, the Irishman, uh, fuck, he's tough. Hmm. <laughs> he's, oh, friend. he's a lot tougher than I thought he was. He's dope though. Like I've watched him fight a lot. They fought Roy, he beat Roy Wills yep. last year um, for the WBC international title. Mm. I beat um, the Italian Alessandro Sara, who's also very good mm. um, for the world title. So he's legit. Um, yeah, you could see He's kind of, it was largely a matter of Pongsiri playing Sean Clancy's game a little better than Sean Clancy could. So it was actually Clancy who had to revert to something different. Because, like, Pongsiri, like, you listen to his, like, you read the subtitles on his pre fight interview, and he's like, from the first second of this fight, I am going to walk in, like, I'm just going to walk <laughs> Sean Clancy down and I'm going to strike him with my powerful punches. Like, I just want, like, like, I'm a simple man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for real. Like, <laughs> like, they're not really, like, I, I love ties when they get put in, like, the promotional sort of thing because, like, they don't really know how to, like, you know how, like, Western fight promotion, it's so much, like, innuendo and, like, mm. uh, what I'm going to do, I don't I'm know. I'm going to push him to the limits. Like, I've been working on some. So he's just like, I'm going to walk out from the corner from the first second of the first round and I'm going to strike him with powerful punches. <laughs> that's just like, literally, you just put his dukes up and just... He has this bit of like waddle and he's... <laughs> but it's funny, it's like, because there's no crowd, it's like, he's just... <laughs> yeah, you can hear the grunting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't realize how much sound he made like until that first yeah, time I saw it. I go, God, damn, what's that noise? Like, oh, that's him. I'm just going... Oh, he's, 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 he's. And I'm it's... enjoying crowdless fights. Yeah, me too. All MMA shows and everything. Like, you can hear what the corners are saying. The fighters can hear the commentators. Mm. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you, and you can hear the impact of every every blow. Oh, yeah. yeah, every. <clears throat> yeah. Well, the impacts of these blows are yeah. disgusting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> those are gross. Actually, that reminds me of something else I got to mention after this fight. But I'll break down the fight. <laughs> Fair. Um, I, I liked what Pong Siri was doing to keep this fight on the phone booth because you'd see, um, what I was saying it was like. Sean Clancy needed to make the space because like Cole Sean, they actually have quite similar styles. Like Clancy has that sort of like very comp punches to kicks combination oriented style mm. but it was like Ponsiri just did such a good job of just disrupting that combo but you yeah. see it was all at this short range in that like he would teep like so uh, Clancy would start to throw some punches it was teep but it was like teep off the lead leg and then march right back into range so not like a teep to make space a teep to 
fuck what you're doing and then yeah. I'm just going to get right. And also like, <laughs> or like, like most of what Clancy would initiate started off a of one, two, and then mm. it would just be like, hand up for the jab, cover the right hand and drop the elbow before you can throw anything else. But the way that Clancy would try to make some space and throw a long kick, it was a little bit longer than Pong Siri. And Pong Siri would, he was doing these catches, but really just dropping it, like, like, like making such an effort to, because a, a catch and disengage the way he was doing, it's generally at range, hmm. but just catch, just throw it right down without giving him, he didn't want to offer any reprieve, just like throw it right down and then yeah. throw him from that, that hands to elbow kind of range. Um, Pogsby's output for that first two rounds, so like, like that, um, and then he dropped Clancy brutally in mm. the second round, just that left hook. <laughs> that's funny. We talk about like most of the damage he did in this fight was off that left hook, right elbow, and that's what the knockdown was. Like he stung him with the left hook. I thought the left hook was going to do the knockdown. Like if, yeah. if he left him, he might have fell. Mm. Then just closed right over with that. It was like the left hook wobbled him and like just bring Clancy's feet together and mm. just wasn't set for that elbow. Yeah, so when the elbow... Like I thought that was over because he landed pretty hard. Yeah. But then... um, Yeah... Answer the count and obviously fought a little bit better. Also, yeah, in the third round, like he towards the end of the third, he was having some it. success. Well, like he was like he switched, like he started getting the uppercut going. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, the, the uppercut answer was to working. Punk series, like longer kind of guard hold. Yeah, and it was working pretty well. Mm. It was interesting because he was throwing and missing that uppercut quite a bit at mm. the start, but I guess just found it sweet. Yeah, and like maybe Punk series, like the more success he had, the more kind of static he would be about. Yeah, just doing that reach and hold on the hands just to kind of oh, like that was interesting the way he, like. This is the thing about Pong Siri at this weight. When he's not so overmatched for sheer physicality, like you see what which parts... Because none of what Pong Siri is doing here would work against someone twice the size of you. Yes. Pin and hold to throw his, his kick and stuff like that. Like he's a very physical fighter. Mm. And that like you can see that working here. Yeah. They're quite interested to see more Pong Siri now. Because it's just stay at a good weight. <laughs> like Pong Siri and Liam Harrison would be a sick fight. Oh yeah, that would be a really good fight. That'd be a sick fight. I think that's that's the fight to make. Mm. Like especially if they if they bring Haggerty over for that, yeah, November show, then you can get Harrison on on the same plane. Oh, that's it. And it's like we're saying, like, if you got a, if you bring guys from the UK, like, there's there's plenty of Oz guys as well. That's yeah. close. It's closer maybe. It's arguably closer. Yeah, but they're just watching <laughs> the news like. Looking at Victoria, yeah. like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously not Victorians. <laughs> Sorry, but <laughs> yeah, but it's a big play. So it is. I can go to France now. That's it. MMA's legal there now. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. That's, so that was interesting as well because I just go, oh, only this year. Damn, I thought they was already good to go, but no. Well, yeah, cool. But um, but yeah, great fight of one. Yeah, well, well, well done, Pong Siri. I thought that was like a that was a resurgence fight for Pong Siri. I thought like well, I wasn't I, I sure think what he was going to look like. Yeah, I think it's more so kind of shows it's like this is what I look like when I'm at where I'm meant to be. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's also a matter of like because he's fought it his way and had some kind of flat fights as well. I'm like mm. this is what Pong Siri looks like when he gives a shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he's got, got some stuff to prove. Yeah, no, it was good. I'd like to see that Pong Siri mm. fight a little bit more at the right weight. But yeah, good. Another good card. I haven't I haven't been disappointed by any of the one cards nah. since they got shit moving. Yeah, again. the MMA fights on there, they're all right as well. Like, um, nothing really kind of stood out to me mm. this time because like the most of them ended within the first yeah. round, and they're, they're all submissions. Yeah, there was an ankle lock in one of them, or well, straight ankle lock. In there, you don't see that very often. In- nah, well, it was like you know, it's versus like um. Yeah, you know, stereotypically, you look at the dude. He's called Magomed something, probably. probably. <laughs> but I just you just look at the beard. It's like as well. Like he's not Amish, so he must be Dagestan. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> See the Dagestan or Kazakhstan. Yeah. yeah, but like yeah, just kind of wrestle him, and then this other dude from um, Venom Fight Camp, and and like yeah, he went to the, like he was wrestling for like first round, and then second round he rolled in, and just got him into a straight ankle lock, and and I was going, ah, there's nothing really there, but but then. He rolled to his stomach and just basically arched uh, up. Belly down. <laughs> and then yeah. belly, he could say, ah, no, no, I'm done with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Just to the Aussie Brogan, Brogan yeah. Stewart. Yeah. Stuart Ong as well for mm-hmm. getting a win. He had a pretty good win. It was interesting because like he's been fighting um, Muay Thai the last mm. couple of years. He fights out of FA group. Still trains at FA group for his MMA. Yeah. Um, um, I trained with him there like mm. a little bit uh, a while ago. And... He, like, it was interesting because, like, the, actually was the superior grappler in this fight. Like, he was mm. getting given some trouble on the feet. Uh, it was kind of two two guys build a stand-up fighters, like, with some Muay Thai, and, and both have Muay Thai and boxing experience. Yeah. But, like, yeah, he was somewhat uncomfortable on the feet, but it was just getting settled. But then it was, yeah, 
I think it's interesting because like he's done had his Muay Thai fights out of FA group and you could see that real heavy clinching style mm. to, to like the takedown offense was very much clinch oriented I suppose mm. in like a Greco-Roman yeah. way but uh, that's something I, I don't see a lot stylistically in MMA is, is clinch centric grapplers like I think it's probably I mean I don't know enough to say but I always thought it was like probably an underutilized tool it was like mm. a heavy clinch game if your goal is to be on Remember the Cairo Parisian? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, had a strong judo background. Yeah. But his clinching game was like that. Really mm. upper body, underhooks, that yeah. kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, you don't see it that much anymore. It's yeah. all singles and doubles now. Because this, I would have to think, would at least be in part credited to training at mm-hmm. FA Group. Um, but yeah, it was very like, just sort of overpowered and, and very mm. body lock centric takedown. And then, but once it was on the ground, it was just completely yeah. Off, yeah well i guess it's especially in mma like most of the guys that are <clears throat> learning their transition from like from standing to ground it's like most of them come from that collegiate background which is like you know the freestyle yeah, kind of wrestling. yeah. it's not really like any kind of greco roman not, not anymore the randy couture's or yeah, anything like yeah, that yeah. coming through which is like i think it's like now like it, it should be like it is an unusual like, game but people that do really good like leon edwards and, yeah and um, <clears throat> that can strike off of it, actually, yeah. and off of it, and it's like it just gives you more options. Yeah, it's like you want to like yeah shoot singles and doubles, but there's a point of time where basically the, it, they take a lot of gas tank. Yeah, as they well. burn so much energy. Mm-hmm. I think the things like Muay Thai clinch is obviously not directly applicable to MMA, but I think if you immerse, like I don't think you know how like MMA fighters do like to immerse themselves in certain arts to pull mm-hmm. pieces from them. Yeah, um, I think proper Thai clinching could be one of those. I mean, like, maybe it couldn't. I'm sure, oh, like, I'm, some MMA I think, expert. I think there's a lot of... Like, but it, it is Greco-Roman. Essentially, it's Greco-Roman wrestling mm. with knees and elbows. Like, yeah. it's... it's In that sense, it's almost, like, more applicable to MMA than mm. Greco-Roman is because it's... It actually... You have to deal with strikes at the close range. And mm. I think that was a little bit of that. that was, like, you know, to see that he was obviously, as someone sort of transitioning from... Like he has amateur MMA experience too, but he's been doing Muay Thai more recently. Like the transitions a little bit. I think like for the most part, when you see like striker going to MMA, it's a kickboxer. Like like even Saki yeah. when he was in his UFC fights, he had no idea how to clinch. I mm. mean, um, even that first one that he won, like he was just dropping his hands over his guts and <laughs> yeah, it. he won that right. fight. But he looked like shit in the clinch. Like yeah. it's not um, because American. Fighters. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's, 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 it's funny sometimes, yeah, man. You you see it on the local scene as well. Like, like you know, there's a lot of MMA gyms that do like the development days from yeah. here in space. Go, oh, no elbows. And yeah, it's weird. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. a, but like you do MMA, right? Do they throw elbows? There? I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. And there's a clinching component, but they but a lot of them like like just go, oh, we just we just do the Dutch kickbox and I go, that's cool, do that. But there is a transition between yeah. the striking and the ground. Yeah, I've never clinching. understood it because because I'm cool with some people who are like oh, the MMA gyms are coming to the show. Like I don't care about that. Mm. I think it's cool. Like I think if you want to go to MMA, it's dope. Like you should be doing jiu-jitsu tournaments and yeah, go have a couple of amateur boxing fights and hundred percent jump in and do like development day. We tell like again, like I'm sure an MMA coach could tell me why I'm wrong. To me, that feels like the formula to like mm. like as an amateur, surely you should be doing. All the arts as best you can. I'm like just getting a taste. But yeah, the, the MMA guys, as far as when they want to do striking for experience, they want to do K1. And I've never really... But that's always what like... Like when I was coming up, starting out, was told. Because like, I was a little bit... You know, we had we had a little bit more of a hand in MMA then. Mm. We're like, no, nah, the Thai stuff is not good for MMA. Just kickbox. But to me, it's like, isn't Muay Thai just more of MMA as a stand-up yeah, art than kickboxing is. Like, look, like, and, and I'm not saying this like critically as like, it's like legitimate confusion. Like mm. to me, I if I had, you know, like like if I was trying to advise someone what to do for MMA from mm. like someone who doesn't really understand, I'd be like, yeah, go do a little bit of everything. Mm, but right. I feel like kickboxing, is, like I can understand it, but that's just because it's more stylistically similar to what guys do in MMA. I yeah. thought uh, Muay Thai was popular in MMA because of the clinch and you, that close range in fighting. Yeah. And it makes more sense to me if you're in a Muay Thai clinch, you see some wicked trips wicked and throws. Trips, yeah. mm. And to me, that'd be awesome in an MMA fight. Yeah. And if you adapt it to get an underhook or learn how to use a wizard like in wrestling, yeah, and get the, your the, hips behind it, yeah. and you can easily modify that Muay Thai clinch into a hip throw yeah. or an upper body, even upper body control. Yeah. And push them onto the fence 
and get to work. Mm. Get, Randy Couture was really good at that. He yeah. used to have that dirty boxing going on. Every time he broke from a clinch, he'd throw in an elbow or a, yeah. or a hook or an uppercut. Mm. Dirty yeah. box his way out of it. But I also think it's the way like clinching makes you strong. Like clinching makes yeah. you really strong on the inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm. It's, I, don't, I think it's more so, like especially back in the day, it's just like I think probably a lack of knowledge and a lack of uh, flexibility on both people's part. Like, you know, back, like, New South Wales wasn't that long ago where it was just basically a kickboxing scene. Yeah. And <clears throat> so when they gave you the Muay Thai, they just didn't understand it. And they, yeah. so they don't know how to teach the clinch. And then, like, especially, like, going from Muay Thai background, especially, like, really Thai, thai trainers from that one, they're, they're, they're sometimes not very flexible in yeah. their teaching yeah. methods either. So it's, yeah. like, so it's like a bit of both sides. You have to find a compromise point. Like, if you went to, a, like, a really Thai style gym and you were trying to get better at MMA, you wouldn't, if you adapted their style, it wouldn't work for you, of mm. course, because it's different. Like, it's the same way as, like, if you're an MMA guy and you want to fight. Like, when we get MMA guys coming to the gym, like, I'd like to do yeah. some more time. Like, cool, but you got to do some shit different to what you're right, doing. So, you it's know? like, yeah, it's like, it's like, we understand what you're doing from here, but we're just going to show you this and play within the rule set, yeah. of course. And, like, like, but we're not to the point of going, no, this is wrong. You should be doing yeah. this. Like, you just go, just understand this is how we just. They're different do it. for different styles. Like, yeah. Just play it out, you know? It's like, you know, it's doing jujitsu. It's not like you're going to start fucking throwing punches where yeah, you're Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can, but, you know. You can, but you don't want to be that but guy. But you don't want to do that. <laughs> no, I think it's the thing as well about Muay Thai, as where it's like perceived in MMA circles, is it's like, like, Jiu Jitsu is its own thing. Whereas, like, I think just the lack of popularity in Muay Thai means, like, people think of it as, like, MMA light. Mm. Like, it's <laughs> MMA without the ground yeah. and stuff. Because, like, 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 they don't really understand. Like, I think everyone understands from an MMA perspective, if you went and did a, a Gi Jiu Jitsu match, you wouldn't just be doing all your... Like, you'd be grappling differently to how you would grapple in MMA yeah. with everything present. I don't think that same understanding translates to like when you fight Muay Thai, you have to stand sort of different and you have to mm. block different because of how the score works and stuff like that. I just don't think like the nuances kind of translate. Kind of think like, ah, well, it's, just, it's, yeah, just, it's just, it's probably just not in the mainstream as much. Yeah. And which like, you know, it's changed now because of one from that one. Yeah. People probably think we're fucking paid by one because mm. the amount of one stuff to do, but it's the only stuff that's on. It's great shit. And it's, yeah, lots stop. Of, and lots it's free. Of, it's, it's easy. Free. It's lots free. Muay Thai. It's available. <laughs> yeah. But, but I think it, that brings it to the, highlight a lot more mm. yeah 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 i mean with with jiu-jitsu they're like in the early days and it's why ufc started to show how you could use it in a real fight in a self-defense yeah. scenario but as it's progressed over the last 25 years it's become more sport orientated yeah so you're going to see funky guards and weird inverted positions and baron bolos and things like obviously you would, wouldn't use in an mma fight uh -huh. unless you're ryan hall he's like <laughs> some sort of wizard or something <laughs> You know, his Imanari rolls into leg locks. Mm. Yeah. But like, you know, then, like today they had uh, Fight to Win 151 was on with um, uh, Rafael Lovato Jr. He's mm. fighting professionally in jiu-jitsu again after having to step down from the uh, the middle, middleweight title. Middleweight, yeah. Mm, middleweight title from Bellator. But uh, he went against Tex Johnson, Johnson. He's a tough competitor, but it was a gay match. But it wasn't exciting. Yeah. It was 50-50 guard. Mm. He, Johnson was underneath him. The 50-50 guard... Um, Lovato was on top, basing out so he couldn't get leg locked or ankle locked, and it just ran out the clock yeah. to a judge's decision. And I'm like, oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think to to your point as well about like um, kind of people understanding differentiating between arts mm. that like the the culture that's changing gives. I do think like MMA what really brought it up as far as like from like a consumer standpoint is like people like this like old. The, the, the old fashioned ultimate fighting idea of like mm. this is what would work in a street fight. But I think now we're just understanding like this is just sport. Like yeah. you just gotta be like, oh oh but in a street fight I do this. They go, Yeah, it's not legal in the clinch though. So you're gonna do this take down, mm, you know what I mean? Like yeah. same in like jujitsu, like, oh that wouldn't work if we were punching. It's like cool, we're not punching you, we're doing jiu jitsu. So <laughs> you just stop people say, but you don't punch in jujitsu and like Yes you do. <laughs> I'm not teaching you how to punch though. I'm teaching you how to grapple. Well, that's it. And it's just like it's just better to, for everyone to learn. Like, you know, we just, like, all the things that we do, it's like, yeah, it's in, in a common part of sports, like, kind of rule set of, like, you know, this we teach and how we compete. And, like, I guarantee it, if you did a bit of Muay Thai and did a Jiu Jitsu, you'd kick some fucking guy's ass. Yeah, you know, like, on the street. That's why I say to the guys at Cross Train, I say, if you want to learn to fight, learn Muay Thai, learn Jiu Jitsu, and you'll be like a John Wick motherfucker. Yeah. Mm. But, like, you know, everyone just feel, has to feel like, you know, it has to be a real life scenario every time you get Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, every to class. me, like, because I have this, like, when I would teach, I would have this conversations a lot it's like but if they all like if 
they did this in the street. I'd be like, I have never, ever thought about what I do in a combat sport sense as like hmm. applicable to the street. Like, I don't care. Bro. <laughs> like, I seriously don't. I've yeah. never considered it. I don't it. care either. I mean, yeah. you hear like uh, even, even high level, nothing against people who want to train for self-defense, but I find it kind of boring. Hmm. And it's not what kept me doing GDC yeah. for 12 years. And, and, and I still ref, refute that if you focus on sport jiu-jitsu, you're not going to be effective at self-defense. I think that's bullshit. Mm. If yeah. you had a single leg or double leg or hip throw someone and get them on the ground, what are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to mount and you're not going to just, you know, give them a typewriter on the chest or a wet willy. Yeah. You're going to drop hammer fists and elbows on them because you're in the mounted position. Yeah. If they turn away, you take the back and you choke them out. That's like what I always say as well, like when people talk about, you know, being well-rounded for self-defense stuff. Like if you're pretty good at like any full contact combat sport you're probably fine against some oh, dude yeah. in the street well you just break it down <laughs> what, what are the most effective martial arts that they use in MMA it's Muay Thai it's boxing it's Jiu Jitsu it's wrestling it's yeah. Judo and what do they all have in common they're all practiced in a live yeah. scenario mm. they all spar all of them Yeah. and that's why they're all effective even isolated on their own like Muay Thai is a fairly complete martial art in, mm. in lots of respects because there's clinching and grappling in there so if you can take someone down to the ground, you can win the fight because you can mm. just kick them in the head. Yeah. And jiu-jitsu, I'd argue, is similar. You don't have to be a great striker, but if you know how to cover and change levels, you can take someone down. Yeah. Now they're in the position you want them to be in. Mm. Maybe, what if there's multiple attackers? Well, you know, what if aliens come and land? And, you know, <laughs> it's the same scenario. You, you can't predict what's going to happen, can yeah, you? Like, I love those places that teach, like yeah. you say, do multiple attackers. Like, if you honestly are equipping someone with the idea that multiple knife-wielding attackers, like, they're sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's just so mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> You're setting them up for failure. Like, if multiple people attack me, like, oh, I'm just it's going been like, fun, everyone. Yeah. I'm just going, did you walk into a ninja village? Yeah. I was like, I was like, they were numb. Chunks what if you're at, I think the scenario is what if you're at the pub and the mates jump you and stuff like that you say like, get up I train you all to get up immediately yeah. <laughs> I don't train you all to line your back and, and roll in, inverted into a berambolo if you're in a street That's situation true. multiple people attack me I'm just hitting the legs <laughs> yeah <laughs> true yeah. well it and it's like same thing like cause like cause with the combat sports like there's such a aspiring component like you know not being the shit out of each other every day but like it's like you Stop get used up. to like the yeah <laughs> that's, that's, oh, yeah, yeah, good, good weeks <laughs> it's um you know you get used to being conditioned to violence as well yeah that's like, the thing because like, yeah. like if you're in a like you know in the, like the street situation from there when you're kind of just used to it like you know I get punched and choked in the face every day man you know it's like you know, jokes on you I, I'm into this shit yeah, <laughs> it's like right. it's like you, 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 you're a real calm and you you react a lot better opposed yeah. to like if you kind of just I was like, oh, I'm gonna practice, you know, dragging the, like the arm, the, then disengaging the knife with a with a hammer fist strike, <laughs> oh. and like, uh, but if it's like, in, and the sparring's always just like learn to be like, you gotta go hundred percent. It's always frantic, and you just yeah. you're not uh, like you know learning to actually rack, and you just kind of there just flying. Ah. Yeah. Then like, yeah, of course, like um, it will never work. Just yeah. Because like you, you, you won't be able to process what's yeah, going on. People mm. just sell that smoke so much. Like, <laughs> yeah. and they, and they, a lot of these, like, you know, these karate gyms and ta- taekwondo gyms, I'm not saying all of them are bad because you see really good taekwondo and karate techniques in MMA. Yeah. Mm. But some of them are selling fish oil the way yeah, they teach it. There's definitely good ones and bad. Like, I don't think it's any. Actually, I think the worst ones are the ones that are just like self defense gyms. Like, they're not, yeah. they're not like mm. attributed to an art. Like, they'll be like, our trainer has done it. Zendukai and this and that and he's a master of everything but he's never had an actual fight in his entire life. <laughs> I said fish oil, I meant to say snake oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they're selling fish oil, they're going to be fish oil. I like fish oil. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't know how to fucking defend against 10 dudes but my joints are fucking lubricated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But like talking about weirdness, let's make a little segue to like a little topic that we're, we're thinking about um, in terms of like man, combat sports are just fucking weird, aren't they? Yeah. It's just like <laughs> there's lots of like, you know, weird fights that have happened but there's also been talks like a lot of fights that like there was like the, the hype that was actually put into these fights from there, but yeah. they never really eventuated. But I feel like in all the fights we're going to talk about, they never happened because they were never going to happen. Mm. They just should never have been talked about. <laughs> yeah. Like Ronda Rousey versus Floyd Mayweather. <sighs> it's just, there was like the, legit talk about it. But like, oh, like yeah. obviously yeah. we were never going to do that, right? Mm. For MMA rules. Really obvious, right? Yeah. Like but the thing about this fight was like, that's a good one. To st- I mean, like obviously, like obviously, that part was never gonna happen. Yeah. But, but like the problem but. with this this tour, because this was talked about a lot, is that people saying like, 
Rousey could beat Mayweather in straight boxing. Like, <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> cut, cut to the gif of her going. Whoosh, she, whoosh, said, whoosh, she said in an article I read that she was going to bear crawl to across the cage to him and take and attack the legs and everything like that. And I'm just like, yeah, but you know, he could still sprawl on you and still hammer fist you. And yeah, I, I don't uh, know why uh, we talked about that. Yeah, but it's like as well, like um, people ended up though, don't they? People ended up. Mm. Oh, for, for, it's like the discussions, what the discussions. Yeah, what but it? yeah, like I feel like even looking back. Even if you say you did, I think everyone kind of got sold something on the Ronda Rousey thing. Mm. But like, <laughs> yeah. We, I feel like now with a few years as a buffer, you can be like, yeah, we, we were pretty quick to... Not like... Because obviously she was the best in the world for... And like she had legit... Like her... She beat Misha Tate through two, mm. two, twice, three times. Uh, a couple of times. At least twice. At least twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least twice. Two times. Twice. Yeah. Um, that's legit. And like she beat... Probably the most legit wins for her were Misha Tate and Katzen Garner. Mm. That's two, like, pretty yep. legit. But, like, that's enough to prove that at that time, in a fairly empty division, she was definitely the best. There's a lot of shit in there as well. Well, it's, it was just, like, that that stage of women's MMA, it's, like, it was, you, you wouldn't far remove it from UFC 1. Yeah. It was early days. Yeah. Like, you even see some of the girls now, you go, damn, some of these girls are fucking awesome. Yeah. And that's not to shit on women's division. After Dana White said, oh, don't, they'll never be female fighters in it, UFC. It was held in the dark somewhat deliberately. And mm. it's like the, the growth of women's MMA in particular has been exponential since mm. it got. Because like, like the, the amount of ground it's covered mm. um, since that time has yeah. been the same as what like, sort of men's MMA has done in. 15 yeah. years or something like mm-hmm. it's been ridiculous um but it's like we were also like we're sold this like very well packaged marketing machine that was the, the rousey reign it's that they were putting her in fights with people that shouldn't have been fighting her to keep her active when she went on that like wicked run which had sort of three to four fights in one year and like one of them was best Kohea. She knocked out Bashko Hay in 30 mm. seconds. Of course she did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, have you seen Bashko yeah. fight? She still fights. Mm. Actually, yeah. she, she got released by the UFC. And they brought game. her back. <laughs> Resign mm. her again. Jesus. <laughs> I like, we're desperate. We need you. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Rousey versus Mayweather talk was... Yeah, that was weird. But, like, the, the worst person to blame for that, mm. you know who it was. Oh. Joe Rogan. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> oh yeah, he was, he was, was, very, he was, he was on that. Super high. Yeah, yeah he was. He was for real was high. Like, this is like he was super high, crazy, and high. Yeah. Just what if she's 135 pounds? What did Mayweather the oh, yeah, so At his best was 147. Yeah. So you were talking about a woman versus a man, and they're already separated by like Mayweather's. I always say his peak was 147, but he did go up to 154 as well. Mm. So you're comparing a 61 kilo woman versus a uh, a world champion 70 kilo man <laughs> that fight in two different sports mm. but also like the worst thing Rogan said was like she could hold her own just boxing with Mayweather no, no. Oh, so no she <laughs> couldn't but she shouldn't have like, like, well, like she, he, well, yeah he, he yeah let's bring up so many memories now. Like, he, was, <laughs> he was so high on Ronda he was, Rousey he just goes he would legit beat any man at her at the same weight yeah, <laughs> that's good. And then uh, later on, he goes, "Ah, oh, nah, I was." I yeah, was, yeah, he I said was he was wrong since then. Yeah, but I always like those ones where he just goes, "Yeah, it wouldn't happen," but leans in. But what if? <laughs> <laughs> he just leans into the mic. Just starts going. Yeah, <laughs> but, but we'll we'll go on to some of the fights that like oh. feasibly could happen. Right? Feasibly. Like, what do you want to start on? It's, it's hard to say feasibly could happen because like you do, you like you like my one from there. Like, uh, who remembers George Clone Van Dam? Like. Everyone knows. Yeah, he's, like, he's, he's, he's still around. He's still around, but it's like you know, like at the hype it's of still everything. It's the forefront of popular culture. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's it. He's an old mate remakes himself. You know, Mr. Bloodsport, uh, kickboxer. That's kickboxer, a rite of passage. Yeah. Kickboxer. In 2010, he announced with K1, associated with K1, when it was like in its full heydays as well. Yeah. That there was he was going to take to the ring. He's like he got his life clean, got off the coke and everything. He set yeah. set a new new way of life. He was he was meant to be, uh, fight Somrak. Cam Singh. And then if you don't, if you know Somrak Cam Singh, like if you don't know Somrak Cam Singh, get on YouTube. Oh my god. It's like he he was like um a couple times gold medalist in like the Olympics for boxing. Yeah. Um an absolute outstanding Muay Thai fighter. Yeah. And so you look at it now and go, oh this like Cam Singh would have annihilated him. Like within the He would have like, kicked like and honestly that could st- <laughs> Somrak fought like at Lumpini. In his forties, like he came mm. back for a feature fight against um, uh, uh, Warren Two, mm. um, 
yeah, Shasta too. He's in the area now. <laughs> like he came back and fought. Like you know, it just had a three round like showcase fight. Like like looking old. Like <laughs> he was forty six or something. Like, <laughs> but like, they could probably like they did that now. Like Sonra could still. Yeah, just like you know, it could feasibly still happen. But <laughs> but it's like you know, um, John Connor Van Dam obviously well-known actor but like he always kind of hanged his hat a lot of like you know oh my martial arts experience like you know uh, in karate black belt had a 20 and 2 record in karate can do the splits mm. yeah can do the can splits, do the splits. <laughs> yes that's his main his main actual claim to fame do just doing the splits. Do he does it in time cop but he does it like on a kitchen counter <laughs> i'm like that's oh, fucking yeah. awesome the movie was terrible but that was cool <laughs> That's his party trick. But like yeah. he, it's like he was so like it, it was for a while. Like he kept saying that niggas like you know, and K one was like, yeah, you know, John Connor Van Dam's gonna fight for us, mm. and but I was, but, I was going, but why? It's like obviously pay for view advice, of course. But like why? Why is Sonrak? What did you think this through? Yeah, why? Like, yeah, because there's the other thing about that is like you don't want to do that. Like from if you're Van Dam's people, because you know, like you know those martial arts dudes that are like their whole kind of thing is like their imaginary martial arts training that would just get ripped to shreds. Like, it's like same as Steven Seagal. Like, mm. his whole thing is like, Akito I'm an eighth, eighth Dan black belt in yeah. some whatever. <laughs> He's a police officer as well. No, <laughs> sheriff. 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 Oh, sheriff. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't want to watch. Like, like you just dim his shine if you mm. put him in there with some rock and watch him just get kicked in half. <laughs> yeah, it just would have been. No. It wouldn't have went down well. At yeah. all. No one wants to see that. But like, there's a thing about that, like you know, who would you put him against? Like, you got to pull someone out. Like, you, you obviously. Tom Poe. Yeah, just like you know, the real Tom, <laughs> Tom Poe. Po. Or like um, the dude that wasn't the bad guy in Bloodsport, Mr. Chest. You know, <laughs> he, he, had to, he had a huge chest. I can't remember his name, but every movie is, you seem like oh, that's a goddamn big chest. <laughs> I feel like it had to be another actor. Had to be. Yeah. Like, why don't we just do? Van Damme versus Steven Seagal. <laughs> Why don't we? <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. Van Damme versus Dolph Lundgren. I feel like Dolph Lundgren would kick Van Damme's ass. <laughs> I get that impression. He was a karate guy, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, but I think he was like, even like a little bit more legit karate guy than uh, mm. Van Damme. Yeah, but he couldn't do the splits, could he? No, so that's mm. probably going to be the difference. Maybe. Yeah, that's the but difference. he killed Apollo Creed. Oh, shit. So just, yeah. Oh, my God, he did too. <laughs> Van Damme versus Stallone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In boxing, though. Whatever. Whatever. Ah, whatever. <laughs> you know, that's fine. <laughs> uh, what's some of the other weird matchups? It's like, it, and it seems to, like, a lot of them gravitate around celebrities as well. Tina White versus Tita. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, the, was that the behind closed door boxing one? Is that what they wanted to do? No, they were going to do it. Like, like, they talked for a bit about, like, if you're on YouTube, you can find these. They made, like, a countdown show mm. like that's how le- that's how legit the idea was like they were gonna do this like in front of a crowd in a boxing match like there's like it's called bad blood mm. dana white versus tito ortiz they made like the doco for like they're recording dana white like fucking getting off his ass to start training for the first time in his life <laughs> like, yeah, like- was that before jack dana white do you think that was pre pre Jack? Dan it's, it's like that, oh, he, was, he was a bit younger then. He used to do jiu jitsu with the fatitas and yeah, yeah. Like and yeah, like he actually had like a like some boxing fight. I think he's at amateur boxing, boxing yeah. fights. Yeah, but like for for all you want to say about Tito Ortiz, he would have fucking sparked. <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> like, it was, it's true. He, the guy who knocked out Ryan Bader. <laughs> yeah, that's it. He, he did. He did. Okay, he chokes better. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah he's some, yeah, fucked him up. Yeah. But like, yeah, and like, you know, you could just sell Tito as well. Like, you know, especially back in the day, so doesn't mind, he would wear a shot. He goes, yeah. fuck it. Got a big dome, use it. Yeah. <laughs> Throw some hands. But, yeah. I kind of wish that happened because I, I liked the idea that Dana was like, they're talking shit. He's like, fuck it, we could just, I think it was like almost Dana's idea. Like, yeah. Oh, like, who would ask? Like, what would happen if you and Tito got That's, probably like he's just like kind of like I could take Tito in a boxing uh, it's like Tito, probably I'm more so on Tito's side like Tito's like taking it real personal well mm. like Dan White it's always just the ever promoter just, yeah. this would sell a fuckload of tickets yeah <laughs> and I make, make I'll take an L for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then again I go then they said something like that so I always squashed the beef well they got well, they, it just fizzled out yeah I think he's kind of fizzled out he came yeah. to his senses yeah <laughs> uh, I, I don't know like, I just feel like he kind of yeah you go, oh, maybe this isn't such a good idea. As it starts to kind of like 
chug towards becoming a reality. It's like, oh, actually, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, how would people take Dane White if they went through it it got absolutely sparked out? I feel like people would respect him more for it. Mm. Like now, they'd be like, yeah, but you remember that one time he was just beefing with his current light heavyweight champion? Yes, it's and like, he's like, fuck it, we'll just fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's got beef with Jones now. Imagine if they did that. Imagine if the conversation came. Like, mate, because it's the same idea, actually, really. That's like mm. the the problem child division yeah light heavyweight like because he's got similar issues with john jones it does they're just like, yeah, but, like when, a lot of issues with a lot but of now you think like no one would bring that up like maybe <laughs> john jones should fight then why yeah. <laughs> but then like it sounds stupid but like that's what they did before yeah they just decided that the president should fight that yeah. was a real vegas promotion kind of mentality wasn't it mm. it just shows you like UFC fans in America are WWE fans at heart because that's some Vince McMahon These shit. Are savage dogs. Yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. After anything. <laughs> I remember when everybody wanted to see Fedor fight in the UFC. Remember that? Oh, it was yeah. so, so hyped and they just wouldn't, they wanted cross promotional stuff. And, yeah, they wouldn't co promote with M1. Yeah. But and Triforce then, did. Mm. Yeah. And, they, like, and then they tried to match him with Randy Couture and everyone's like, shit, yeah. Like, that was kind of the fight of that era for yeah. a while. Yeah. And it just never happened. It was, that's. That's probably the biggest disappointment. Wow. Well, then, like, even later on, they were talking about they could have. Fedor and Lesnar. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, that was, like, mm. a, the the second time they started talking about bringing Fedor to the UFC. Mm. That was yeah. sold a lot. No. Well, still speaking about the UFC from there, who um, remembers, it's like, oh, how can you know? If you if you listen to Joe Rogan, it's like, I think he tells his story at least he once a year. He tells his story a lot. <laughs> but him um, was meant to fight Wesley Snipes. I like the Wesley Rogan was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it was someone else. I like this story because it was Wesley Snipes' idea. Mm. He just said, like, what if I fought in the UFC? And then he actually talks about him versus John claude Van Damme. Mm. Um, and then... Oh, actually, uh, that would have been, yeah. Uh, yeah, but then, like, no one was really interested. He was like, you know, I want to... Like, because he approached the UFC, like, we should do me, you know? Mm. You know I don't even remember, like, Wesley Snipes being, like... Obviously, he's super, super famous, but not, like, the top... I didn't really think of him as the type of guy that you'd just be like, yes, you can fight because it'll just immediately draw interest. But I guess... I think I was reading time. from there he had problems with the IRS. Yeah, because it was <laughs> yeah, his he, idea. I need money. Yeah, <laughs> and then <laughs> the reason he, didn't, he went to jail I, I, for, yes, for tax did, evasion. Yes. So mm. that's like he literally just was obviously like staring down the barrel of some big tax problems. Mm-hmm. And so then he's like, here's a cool idea. I'll fight in the UFC for millions of dollars. And then it didn't happen because he went to jail. So it was obviously like this was just a harebrained scheme <laughs> to yeah. get out of money trouble. <laughs> but like, I don't, like, Joe Rogan, okay, so he's like, they go, okay, we'll fight Joe Rogan. But, like, Joe Rogan, like, at that stage, he actually said, it was, like, you know, legit brown belt under Eddie Bravo. Yeah. Actually has fight experience. Yeah. Like, in stand up in that as well. Like, what was Wesley style? Like, like yeah, what's, he, what's he, he hanging his hat karate, on? karate, but he had no... <laughs> his karate people, like, yeah. Uh, the problem, I trailer. legit think Rogan would have smoked him. Well, that was, like, because yeah. th- that was kind of the the way I remember that story getting told was Wesley said, what about we do me and JC VD in yeah. the USA? Mm-hmm. And then it was Rogan that when he heard that was like, that's not interesting. That's not going to make the money that you want it to. You need to fight someone current and someone that will draw the UFC fans interest. And then someone suggested, why don't you fight him? And he was like, no, actually, no, he got called about it. Like, yeah. what, what about you fight him? And then he said, how much money? <laughs> and then they told him some, apparently there was some stupid amount of money getting put on this. And he was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever, I'll do it. And then Wesley's not... Because his, his assessment of it was like, you know, he was obviously, at that point, was a brown belt. Mm. Um, and Wesley Snipes had no actual combat experience. He was like, <laughs> I could just kind of like wrestle him to the floor and sort of choke him out kind of quickly. And I wouldn't even really have to hurt him that bad. Yeah. Make keep some money. <laughs> yeah, and keep his face yeah. intact. And yeah. But I wonder if you're like you're going into that fight, like if the fatidas go, look, man, just... We need at least a round. Yeah. <laughs> we need... <laughs> no, I feel like for them, it would be like, like, Rogan's there, dude. Yeah. So they'd just be like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> just just go. Like, make their commentary look like a superstar. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, it was like, you know, Randy Couture versus James Tony. Just <laughs> Don't fuck oh, around too much. Yeah. Just take him down. That's yeah. a fight that should be on this list. It should be, but it happened. Though. It happened. <laughs> it happened. Yeah. It happened. <laughs> probably should never have happened, but it did. Then it's like, um, yeah, there's been a few like boxing ones as well they talked about. Like all like, you know, crossover boxing to K1 and vice versa yeah. as well. What are some of the ones from there do you guys remember? Oh, uh, it's got to be. Well, the one they're talking about that spurred Mike Tyson's comeback was Mike Tyson versus Bob Sapp. <laughs> but Bob I Sapp. went into reading this one again since we brought it up the other day. That's the one I found. 
Mike Tyson versus Eric Esch. Butterbean. Butterbean. Yeah. And, and this guy, like, this he's, is from Cora, but yeah. this guy seems to know what he's talking about, but he's just like, it might happen still because Tyson's uh, looking for, like, exhibition fights. Maybe. Butterbean would fight well, anyone. Well, he wants this Legends League to happen. Yeah. Well, Mike yeah. Tyson, um, in the very latter, when he was still fighting, but in the very latter end of his career, I think probably after he had won his last fight, mm. he had a couple more, but he didn't win any. Yeah. Um, he started to kind of get into talks with K1, and that's where just this weird shit starts to happen. <laughs> K1, what was coming? Like, you know, UFC, K1. Just yeah. Back and forth. But... I think I had this wrong. I always thought there was discussions with, about Tyson and Sap having K1 fight. Mm. But I actually think at the time, Sap, uh, uh, Tyson asked about mm. fighting boxing. But oh, I guess I'm not sure. I thought there was talks about them. Because it was K1 was going to promote it. Yeah. So you'd think it would be. I don't think Tyson cross trains though, does he? I don't nah, think no, he wouldn't. But he, he wouldn't either. Yeah, like, okay. He would just throw punches and he'd win still. Yeah. Um, but at the time, like, like this was funny. Like, um, to, Sap had just kind of hopped out, hopped codes from MMA to K1. Mm. Um, and he fought on K1's big debut show in the USA yeah. against Chemo. Oh, Chemo yeah. Leopoldo. The, yep. <laughs> yeah, they've carried the cross. They carry the cross. <laughs> and he won that fight by KO. Mm. And then Tyson came into the ring for a little bit of a hype and they start going off it. Tyson's like, it's like, sign the contract, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, people forget, like, at this point as well, like, Sap actually was, I mean, like, he wasn't good as such, mm. but, like, no one who's that big sucks that bad. Like, if you just are that much of a specimen, mm. you're going to win sometimes. Like, and at this point in um, Sap's career, he <laughs> debuted in K1 with, like, he, he lost against, like, a sort of a journeyman, um. I can never say the Japanese names because like, mm. but he was manhandling his dude. He threw him to the floor and punched him on the ground in the corner. He lost by DQ. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And then he beat like Cyril Labardi, who mm. like, wasn't bad, beat him. And then he went on to beat Remy Bonyeski twice, back to back. Like, Sap had legit wins. Then he beat Ernesto Hoost. Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, it was uh, Ernesto Hoost oh, that's that he it, beat yeah. back to back. Yeah. In this, so, so in the time they were talking about him fighting, um, um, like Tyson, like Sap was actually like right some yeah some hype. Like yeah, be, yeah, beat uh, Anessa who's twice. How old is he now? S- Bob Sap. Yeah, he doesn't age. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. He's in his forties. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's feasible. He could still fight Tyson in an exhibition. Well, that's what oh, like yeah. that's what came out. Tyson did Joe Rogan's show um the other week, and they talk in the first few minutes about like how'd you end up into a comeback fight? Why are you fighting Roy Jones? And he's like, they called me about Bob Sap. Like someone called mm. him and said, "You find Bob Sapp," and he said, "Can I fight him?" The Marcus of Queensbury rules, <laughs> and they went back and said, "Yeah, he'll fight your boxing." And he said, "Yeah, cool, let's do six rounds or four rounds mm. or something." He talked about Bob Sapp, and then they were like, "Oh, actually, if you if you like, it was kind of like that was like the carrot. the carrot they yeah. dangle and they go, actually, now fuck it, yeah, <laughs> fight Roy Jones Jr." Yeah, it's a, just like just going through multiple people, just going, yeah, yeah, whatever. Mm. But um, but yeah, like yeah. <sighs> Just like Bob Sass, I still now yeah, I remember like he's, he's such a big man. It's, he, it was basically like he was like what Francis Ngannou is now back then. It's like if it's like if you let him like fucking just let yeah. loose, it's just gonna be fucking trouble. Well, the other thing people don't understand is like Sab also didn't always throw his fights. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, he was never like. What are you saying? What are you saying here? Ask Bob Sapp. He's like, if I think I'm gonna lo- if I think I could get hurt, I just. Mm. give up in the fight like yeah. he just throws his fight and then like someone asked him about it once and he just basically says yeah I throw my fights if it's if there's any chance I'm going to get hurt mm. and I get paid like 50 grand to fight so I just fight all the time and mm. I yeah. just throw it and they keep paying me so, yeah. mm. like, he doesn't say it in those words but he basically says yeah, yeah like if I think I'm going to get hurt I mm. just give up I remember that fo- that one fight he had with um, America Cold Cup yeah and it's like he's like it was like one of the first punches, I think, and like Murka just gets him and see him just boom. Like I think it flashes horrible, but like it just looks so weird. Yeah. Because he goes, because he goes, oh, ah, ah. It just looks so over dramatized. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Murka cook up like before, like he says, oh fuck, he just goes, this is a big dude. Yeah. And then he hits, he goes, oh shit, I fucking. I filled the giant. Yeah. <laughs> but see, like, it's actually Mirko cook up that always said like. There was a time when every heavyweight in the world was terrified of Bob Sapp. 
just because like if he really wanted to switch on and do it like he's just terrifying yeah imagine yeah. if you just wanted to go fucking yeah. ape shit crazy yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah like actually like probably put some learn some technique because he did almost kill um big knock yeah and that was right. with no like there was no technique on that he just picked him up and threw him on his head and, like, <laughs> like, oh, like, yes. there's millimeters in that like yeah. where that was at least five years of his career yeah like, and like, <laughs> that one move little tiny minute differences and he just wins off of that slam and that's just off of like sometimes that's we that's just off being a specimen that's not being sometimes yeah. size matters yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like and also there's probably millimeters in that and big dog's dead yeah, yeah like yeah. that's one you look at and go oh yeah ugly. Well, well just thinking of like the height they froze them off like you know if you like if i was on a ledge and i fell neck first mm. off the same height like, you know, there's a good chance I would kill myself. Yeah, mm. yeah. And th- that's not added to the fact that Bob Sat is actually driving you yeah. into the ground as well. <laughs> and then but when you consider, like, Big Nog not only lived, but went on to win the fight. Mm. It's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Big Nog, he was an animal. Animal, yeah. yeah. I did a seminar with him once, mm. back in my old gym, in the TP gym days. It, oh, was, yeah. it was awesome. He didn't move like a big man. He just really fluid, mm. smooth. Him and Alan Goez, he's like, it was a famous MMA fighter mm. in um, in Brazil. He's still coaching in his own gym. Yeah. But was, yeah, that was awesome. It was like, you know, he's one of those rare heavyweights that can actually work guard. Yeah. Mm. You know, him and Fabricio Verdum, I don't think there's many others I can name no, on that list. there's not many. Yeah. Frank Muir, maybe. Snap oh, yeah, yeah, Frank Muir, definitely. Yeah. Was there any other weird fights? I'm going to keep them on top of my head. Well, they did talk about... Well, not like this was ever like on the books, but people started to talk about doing Joe Rogan versus CM Punk. <laughs> uh, did they? Did they? I didn't hear that one. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what people thought. Like that was yeah. like like the internet's option A when they announced the CM Joe Punk Rogan. signing was yeah having fight Rogan. I've got like, nothing against CM Punk, but how did he get in the UFC? He famous. Well, just, just, just he's famous. Just famous, yeah. yeah. Just bring over those WWE fans to have a looksy. You know, because it was, it's up. not like it wasn't like he was like Lesnar, who was just a fucking monster, and also a collegiate wrestler. Yeah, like he had no real combat experience. No, yeah. just wrestling, and it wasn't even like a, like just, a an atypical sort of. He wasn't like a typical professional wrestler either. Like he didn't have like the. Was it big? Was yeah. it super athletic? He wasn't a genetic he's, freak. He didn't have a. a he, was, he, was the, he was the everyday people champion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the worst part of that was that two people had to fight for the opportunity to fight Sam Yeah. Yeah. Like, why did they do that? Yeah. <laughs> especially how it went down as well. Yeah. It's like, damn, this is like. It just, it's just such a flop. He just got so hammered. He yeah. just looks so out of place. But I think it was counterproductive for the UFC. If they wanted that crossover from WWE, watching him just get annihilated, they probably all those WWE fans went going, uh, uh, no, nah, I'm not watching that again. Mm. You know, where's, where's the latest paper? But like, you know, in all honesty though, like him versus Joe, I don't think it would have went any different. No, it would have been about the same. Yeah. Because yeah. like, what, he wasn't, I don't think he was even a blue belt back then. CM Punk. I think he was a blue belt. A blue yeah. belt? Yeah. Fresh. Freshy. Freshly minted. Is that a, like, but is that a celebrity blue belt though? Is Probably. That, is that yeah. Ashton Kutcher blue belt? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher's supposed to be pretty he's good, isn't he? I think he's, it might even be a, I think he's a, definitely a purple belt now. Yeah. But isn't he supposed well, to be, don't they say he's like pretty that's, good? That's the rumor. I mean, I only hear the, the keyboard warriors on the internet talk yeah. about it because, you know, they'd love to slam celebrities. Yeah. But the Machado's, I mean. Yeah, the, like that's what I read. They, they said he's actually like. Fuck man, I would I wouldn't diss anyone who had a belt from a Machado, mm. but they have their own special training system for celebrities because these guys can't get bruised and broken and shit. They're insured for millions of bucks. Mm. If they get injured during a production, they fucking they get stopped. Mm. Just so do they, your jitsu the motorbike helmet on. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're a face. It's not rocket time. Yeah, well, that's it. No, they they have a they have it. So you can you can tailor jujitsu to people without like snapping them. Like I I got my arms and everything busted up and I got injured all over the place when I started because it was just like go hard or go home mentality mm. but if you want retention and want people to actually train it you can tailor it for different people and different needs mm-hmm. it's not compulsory to get hurt and I think that's how the Machados have done it but yeah I'm not going to sit here and go oh it's, it's bullshit I was like yeah sorry Hugan and Sean Jacques <laughs> one of my jiu-jitsu heroes I'm going to tell you you're full of shit that's it all I'm just saying is Ashton Kutcher come prove it to me <laughs> <laughs> the mats don't lie well, that's it and it's like, you know, you can take a selfie of me just getting fucking bow and arrow choked by Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> I had a, That'd I be had my a, new profile pic. <laughs> <laughs> I had a nine-year-old student say to me the other day, we're going over triangles, and he said to me, 
oh, this is like what Mel Gibson did at the end of Lethal Weapon. And I was like, what? Damn. And I'm just like, you know, at the end of Lethal Weapon, he did a triangle choke on the bad guy at the end. I'm like, how old are you? And he goes, I'm nine. I said, you've seen Lethal Weapon? <laughs> he goes, yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ. He's like, you just urged yourself a strike. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was kind of proud and disturbed at the same time. That's a well-raised kid. <laughs> oh, that's it. Like, he's going to go far. He's educated. He's like, I like you more now. Yeah. <laughs> Someone has been paying attention to it for that kid's <laughs> education. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we'll leave it there. It's almost about an hour and a half here. But um, yeah. As, as we know, combat sports is fucking weird. And that's why I love it. And it's fun. It is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, you know where to find us. YouTube, you're probably watching us now. Subscribe. Press the subscribe button. Also, press that little bell. And that every that's time right. that we upload a video, you'll know it's up. It's right there. <laughs> it's it's right it? there. I don't know. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you know, it's like, it's just like, uh, this. It's right. Subscribe. Subscribe there. Video where, like, you know, you can yeah. watch next. Probably the last one. Mm. Yeah, that's probably just wrong, but we'll see how we go. And, you know, with the finest iTunes, Spotify, and whatnot. Listen to the outro. That's what I paid for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other than that, see you next see time. Ya.